Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me already then my name is Sarah and I'm a flower farmer in East Yorkshire in the UK and today I want to just do a really good tidy up on the farm because things have kind of been getting on top of me over the last few weeks. Um, we lost our dog and then I've been working a little bit on the farm and also I've been doing, seem to have been doing a lot of like desk based work which is, is weird. That's been taking up a lot of my time so what I really want to do is just spend a good few days out in the fields just getting things sorted and tidied up because every time I go out there to pick flowers I'm like oh I just really need to get the lawnmower out and I need to move that big pile of weeds that I've picked and things like that. So. Um, unfortunately it's just started raining well I'm saying unfortunately but I'm kind of glad it's raining because we haven't had very much rain this month at all and um, I really want to cut the grass I'd like to maybe get the streamer out for some weeds around the the back flower field um, and also I've got it most importantly on the top of the list I've got some annuals that I want to plant out some sunflowers and I think there's maybe some corn cockle and um, some grasses that I really really need to get planted out otherwise it's going to be too late for them and the reason why I researched them because I already didn't uh, plant the first batch of annuals that I put in so this was a replacement sowing so if I don't get these planted then I'm really doing something wrong so what I want to do is head over to the back field and get things sorted out <laughs> So I, I'm just going to head up to the other side of the farm because I usually um, pre-soak all of my seedlings in kind of like a worm castings, kelp meal kind of concoction just to give them a little bit of a boost before they go into the ground and it adds that into the ground as well. Um, so I'm going to fill up my water butt, my 100 litre water butt and um, put a worm castings kelp meal tea bag in there and um, let that steep for a couple of hours and then soak my seedling trays in that extract and then they can go in the ground nice and happy hopefully. Um, I also need to go and grab my hoary hoary knife for planting. I always, because I've got two fields, it makes it super awkward because I have to run up and down to share tools between the two fields and I know it makes sense to get two of everything probably as a, if, if you're going to use the work smarter not harder kind of ethic but um sometimes when my helper comes we both use a hori hori knife up at the front field and i always forget to bring it back and things like that so um i always go up there and come back and forget stuff which is super annoying but yeah i'm gonna go grab some uh, ingredients for my extract for my seedlings and my hori hori knife and then we can come back and carry on tidying the place up. behind me is um, 
always been so weedy and stuff and like with all of the weedy areas in the field I, when I set them up originally I wish that I'd have just sown grass down and let it grow so that I could mow it easily and it would be more manageable for me so what I think I'm going to do is find something to cover this up um, I think I might have something Whew, I'm out of breath after doing that um, cover that up because I would like it to be a kind of seating area there so I might um, put some wood chips down or something and then I can put my picnic bench on top and then I can sit there in this field and um, take a break when I need to so that will be nice if I can get that done and maybe plant a tree or two around there. soaking whilst um, I've been doing my jobs and having my lunch today and they're ready to be planted out here now and um, I'm going to plant them in this bed here obviously I've got a bit of self-seeded auric which I'm actually going to keep um, and I'm just going to I think this bed is 12 inch spacing I'm not sure whether to skip a few holes um, because 12 inch spacing is pretty close for sunflowers but maybe I'll just use this as a trial to see whether it actually works to plant them 12 inch spacing. So I've got all of my sunflowers planted, I've got from here it's hard to see because of these, this auric but I've got from here to where the Greek crest is up there in some flowers and then just a small like six or seven foot section there. Oh, so that's mainly pro cut plum and this bed here is vanilla ice so hopefully they will do well and I'm just moving on to rude beckia and uh, I've got goldilocks here and um, the plants are a little bit small but I'm hoping that they'll do fine once they're out in the field um, as long as they're kept well watered I'm sure they'll do okay. Um, I've actually just ordered a new like, an irrigation tripod stand thing and um, I saw this on I think it's micro flower farm on Instagram it was a reel that she'd made about irrigation and um, I feel like there's been a lot of stuff going around lately on Instagram about irrigation and that drip irrigation isn't necessarily the best thing to use and personally I am with that crew, the, uh, the, the overhead irrigation crew and that is because um, I feel like the whole of the soil should be watered not just the pieces where the drip is laid. Um, I don't use the tape kind of drip which is the one that's more prone to breaking and things so a lot of the complaints I see people making about drip irrigation is that it breaks and they're always having to repair it but I've had drip down in the polytunnel and in the front field for years now and I've never had problems with it um, breaking and that's just because I invested in uh, thicker plastic not the tape stuff so it works well 
for probably for more established plants but for new newly planted seedlings I feel like the drip irrigation just doesn't reach where you want it to reach and I feel like overhead irrigation is definitely the way to go because it gets everywhere so when that comes I'll show you it and I'll um, let you know what I think about it um, but I'm quite excited I think it's coming uh, in about five or six days time um, but anyway I am going to carry on planting up this rudbeckia and then I've got some grasses to do and then that should be all of the planting for today. I just want to take a quick break to thank today's video sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members from all over the world. There's literally something for everyone on Skillshare, whether you are looking to learn something new, practice existing skills or just take some time out and get creative. There's classes in everything from photography to well-being and creative writing to business marketing. We all know how important Reels and TikToks are now for social media. So I just took a class with Sean Dalton on how to create viral videos for Instagram and TikTok. Sean gives loads of useful tips like getting started with making short form videos, how to create an engaging video, finding ideas, finding the trend in music and what the best time of day to post is. If you're interested in growing your social media following or perhaps just doing something a little bit different then consider joining Skillshare. Skillshare is ad free, has multilingual subtitles and new classes are released every week. The first 1000 of my viewers to join Skillshare using the link down in my description will receive a one month free trial. So had to go in for a quick outfit change got my blooming grey hat on um, these will be available very shortly I just want to say um, I'm just testing out the merchandise supplier that I have chosen um, things are kind of up and running on the website but um, I have put in a test order just to see how quickly the delivery is and how it's all gonna go and everything so once that's all been done and dusted I will let you know when uh, I'm ready to start taking orders for merch. Um, so I've got all of this, most of this bed planted with uh, sunflowers, vanilla ice, rudbeckia, uh, there's a little bit of corn cockle um, and then there's ceteria italica which is the green millet and then I think there's the red jewel variety as well so that's all planted there and then this section here about 10 meters worth is planted with pro cut plum sunflowers i'm going to go around to the front and cut the grass uh, we've got a digger here today that we have hired because uh, i have plans to build like um, a lean to kind of thing similar design to the alpaca shelter but in the front field for compost bays, storage of my tools and things and then also shelving for my water butts to sit on a bit higher up because things aren't very organised in that front field at the moment and it is our main view out of our kitchen window so I want the view to obviously be a nice one so I just need to tidy a few things up in that field and then also I'm going to move my water point to the shelter there so I can have a hose pipe on a reel and it's just going to tidy the whole place up so I think it's going to be a relatively cheap thing to do um, all we just need is some upright posts a bit of cladding and a tin roof on it so I don't think it's going to cost too much but we've got a friend coming over hopefully next week to start that and we're also going to lay a concrete um, walkway up to the teepee because um, I want the teepee to be wheelchair accessible and um, we were going to tile it but Rob thinks that he doesn't have the skills or the time or the knowledge to do it so we're just going to um, put a concrete uh, slope in for now and um, in the future I may tile over the top of that and that's just going to be a base um, for that if I want to do that in the future and then we can start making the outside of the teepee look nice and landscaped, plant some trees and shrubs around it so that it's going to look really inviting for people who come on the workshops. So a little bit more tidying up to do and then I'm going to go and head over to the front field and cut the grass there because I've been wanting to do that for a long time now. Just before I go around to the front actually I just wanted to explain a little bit about my changing mindset about planting plants 
and the soil and things and before I used to just like rip out all the plants and pull the roots out and everything and um, lately what I've been doing is cutting the plants off at the roots so that should in theory if the plant was still living when I cut it down it should provide some microbe food for at least a few days until the next plant gets planted into the ground so it's quite easy, easy to use your hori hori knife to just plant a younger um, a next succession of a plant just next to the roots of the old one so in theory that should create a good environment for the new plant to go into because the microbial community is already set up around the roots of the old plant so basically what plants do is they give out exudates in the form of sugars to signal to the microbes what kind of substances they need from the soil so plants will send out different signals depending on what they need and the microbes will go out and get it for them in exchange for these exudates slash sugars that the plant is giving out so it is a symbiotic relationship between all of the microbes in the soil and the plant so if i cut off a plant at the at the base of the plant and then put a new plant straight into it then that community is already there and the plant isn't struggling to find um people to come and help it um, settle into the soil so hopefully it'll help those plants overcome possibly transplant shock and just settle into the environment quicker than they maybe would if I was planting into soil that had been bare for a few months so that is really my plan for the future and one of my big goals of 2022 is to be able to cover crop this field as much as I can over winter so that I have living roots in the soil all year round because when I think about the detrimental effect that ripping out all of these plants in September, October, November and leaving the soil bare for months on end to then plant it again in spring will have on the soil life in this field kind of just makes me feel a bit ashamed that I've done that in the past and um, I'm going to try and find a better way to keep the soil life healthy over the winter and provide a good kickstart for the spring transplants that are going to go in next year. So that is my big goal of 2022 to keep the soil life healthy and put in those cover crops. <music> Is the grass all cut in here and I always feel so much better after the grass has been cut I don't know about you guys but it makes me feel like I've got my life together so I'm just waiting for the boss man to finish work uh, and then we can get the tape measure out and start measuring for my new storage area so I'll just explain to you quickly what I plan to do this area along this back fence here all the way along to basically to that tree is my big debris pile I've got two separate heaps of wood chips for some reason and uh, then I've got a compost pile there and a Johnson Sioux bioreactor and just a lot of crap weed membrane and stuff so my plan is to build something that is aesthetically pleasing for that area there so that um, I can have a couple of compost bays or, or Johnson Sioux bioreactors and uh, I can wheel my trolley, my wheelbarrow in there and um, I'll show you my, I've got a water butt over there in the middle of the field where my, that's my, where my water point is but the purpose of the shelter would be to store all of that stuff in there uh, put some cladding on the side of it so that it's not so visible because um, that is our house behind me there and that's the view straight out of our kitchen so obviously looking at all this crap here is not so nice so hopefully that will just help to tidy it all up and help me as well to not lose my tools all the time which is what I always do but if I can have a shelter with loads of hooks and everything and shelves and things like that I can put all of my stuff in there maybe store my seed trays during the winter 
etc. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully tonight measuring it out, putting some holes in the ground for some upright posts. So I think I probably need uh, maybe six posts here, depending on what size it's going to be. Walter absolutely loves getting onto machinery, whether it's a digger, a lawnmower, any kind of machine, he absolutely loves it. So we've got the base down here, roughly, it's not very level at all, but um, for, the, for the field shelter thing. And um, Rob's just gone to change the bucket because it is getting a bit dark now and our plan for tonight was um, definitely to plant Reggie's tree so he's gone to put a smaller bucket on I think or, or even the corkscrew um, attachment thing, <laughs> what do you call it, a hole borer to um, make a hole to plant Reggie's tree. <laughs> Well, it's late now, it's half nine, but we've just got Reggie's tree planted. I can't wait to wake, wake up in the morning and look at it. Um, it's been such a long day today, but I've got the energy for it today, so I'm not feeling too bad. Hopefully the energy levels will carry on tomorrow. And um, I'm gonna be working in this field tomorrow because I've got lots of cutting back and things to do. So I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, guys. So the weather's a bit uh, kind of horrible compared to yesterday. Yesterday I definitely caught the sun and felt a bit crispy by the end of the day but today is a little bit breezy. It's drizzling a little bit and um, I'm actually glad because I, f I didn't get time to foliar feed stuff yesterday. So I'm going to crack on and um, foliar feed stuff in this field. <laughs> Here's a professional tip for you, charge your batteries on your knapsack sprayer before you come out and then maybe the battery won't run out midway through your watering session. Uh, I'm going to have to switch to watering with a watering can now so that's going to be really fun and exciting. I uh, emptied my tank and uh, I've also watered the things that I planted yesterday because I didn't actually water them last night either uh, but luckily they went in quite wet so they've survived the night and um, I've just taken a few pictures of stuff for florists who've been in touch this week about buckets uh, one's for this week and one's for next week I'm not really sure if I've got what they're looking for but I will try my best and hopefully they will come and purchase from me uh, so yes Later on today I'm going to chop down some stuff in the front field so I just need to take my tools around the front there and um, I think Rob is also going to hole bore the holes for the uh, new field shelter compost area so that will be good. Start of the big chop today, um, th this area is annoying me the most so I'm going to start with that and then I'm going to head over to um, th that Dusty Miller stuff and um, and then the lamb's ear and then over here I've got the oxide daisies and some of the giant scabious and the alchemilla, alchemilla mollis so the whole field is going to get a really good haircut hopefully this morning it has been raining on and off and also my niece is over to visit today so I'm only going to do a couple of hours in the field this morning and then uh, call it a day but I'm going to try and get as much done as I can in the time that I have
busy all day guys. I've got uh, lots of clearing out done. But I've got these big piles of debris, whatever you want to call it, is lying around the, the field. So I think I'm going to go get the quad bike and the trailer because I'm not doing that by hand. I really cannot be bothered. Reggie's tree is looking good. We just put a post in to tie to it because it's blowing in the wind a bit as you can see. So I just need to get something to tie that back with. And uh, over here we have dug out the path for the, the concrete in that's going to go in to the uh, entranceway to the teepee. So Rob's just been and collected some stone from the local quarry. That can go down and then it can have some concrete on top. This afternoon we are also going to be putting the posts, uh, the holes for the posts in my new lean-to area. If there's anything that you guys can recommend that I'm going to need as a feature in my lean-to slash field shelter slash, slash storage area slash composting area then please let me know in the comments because I don't really want to oversee something and then regret it afterwards. So I think I'm going to go get the quad and trailer and get rid of some of this stuff that's in the field. Carry on a bit this afternoon. the piles of rubbish I cleared out of the field and um, I am going to have a rest now it's about four o'clock I'm gonna have a rest for a couple of hours and then pick some flowers later on because I have some bouquets on order for tomorrow so I said that I was gonna do deliveries tomorrow to local areas and a few people have reached out not many but I might pick some for the honesty box some for the deliveries and then the d can you hear Hector coughing you okay son I think maybe something went down the wrong way um yes yeah, so tomorrow a few bouquets and then tomorrow's Wednesday then Thursday I have a couple of florist buckets to do and a three more gift bouquets I think so um, then on Thursday I'm off down south to to do this course which I'm really excited about so um, Thursday, Friday and Saturday I'm going to be out of the office so to speak which I'm so excited about I'm just so excited to be like on a holiday but kind of like a nerdy holiday at the same time <laughs> just one more job to do tonight and that is to pick flowers for tomorrow's orders so earlier on I already cut the paper and the tissue paper ready for bunching them up in the morning so I don't have to do that tomorrow and uh, I'm just going to take some buckets and snips round to the backfield and um, these snips I just want to say were I think they were about six or seven pound on Amazon and these the Felco ones that I've been using for a couple of years now um, since I switched to these smaller ones um, I, and I've used these uh, yesterday or today I didn't realise how clunky and heavy they were and kind of how much of a strain it does put on your hand because when you are cutting a lot of stems um, throughout the like the whole six months or whatever of the season then um, it, it will put a strain on your hand even though if you don't think it is but these are so much easier and kind of more nimble to use so I definitely definitely recommend those and I'll put those down in the description as well.
work on the new field shelter continues whilst I'm picking flowers. Rob's been grafting away. And uh, ropes into it. He's always got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's got this hole borer here on the digger and he's already dug the three holes on the back and um, we're just marking out the three holes at the front for the posts, the upright posts. And um, Rob has actually just perfectly demonstrated why we need this field shelter. What, sorry? <laughs> What's that? You've demonstrated why oh, yeah. we need this field <laughs> shelter and that's because this tool, edging tool, has been left outside and it's rotted and he tried to use it and it's broken. So, so he's putting his work to a good cause and um, hopefully we'll be able to keep all my tools safe and everything else all together in one place which is going to be amazing. Well guys I was about to say how much of a long week it had been and thanks so much for joining me as I'm going to end the video there but I've just remembered it's still only Wednesday um, it feels like it's been a very long week this week already. Um, I've managed to get lots done and I feel like it's been with the help of you guys because I kind of feel like I need to do lots of different things to make the video more interesting and fill it with things that I've been up to instead of just like making a video about one thing or one job that I've been doing. So what I'm going to do is start filming now again for the bouquet making um, that I'm going to do this morning so you guys can uh, watch that on a separate video because I thought it would be getting probably quite a long video by now. It's nice to be able to just make the bouquet vi making videos and put music over them and things. I think that that video will probably come out before this one because it, they're quicker to make and um, I am going away tomorrow so I need to make that, uh, edit that video tonight and um, ready to be set to publish on Sunday. So I hope you have a great week ahead guys. Thanks so much for watching and I would just like to thank these people for buying me a coffee since the last video. I really appreciate every one of you who buys me a coffee and not just those people but those people who watch my channel, uh, write comments and like my videos as well. So don't forget to do that if you haven't already and I'll see you again next time.